Alright guys. Once again, what a difference a day makes. Uh, <laughs> the temperature has dropped 20 degrees since yesterday. It was 77 degrees in Ithaca, New York one day ago and it will be snowing in a few more days that is why i am packing up to get the hell out of here tomorrow i hope so this is my last trip to lowe's and home depot here on saturday october what would that make it are we at the october 28th 2023 there are still a few leaves hanging on mostly the beech trees which will be going extinct themselves in a few years so uh i don't know i'm sure this is going to be some awful news for you guys since it is saturday probably expecting some of that space alien nonsense but uh anyway the saturday space alien follies and the aliens and doomers uh youtube channel have both been put on ice because the reason that uh i was doing those videos i think has been abducted by space aliens and flown off on a ufo i <laughs> never never know when she shall return don't know if she'll show back up next week or I'll never hear from that woman again. So anyway, we are putting the space alien stuff on hold. So uh, I got to think of something else to uh, talk about on Saturday. So I think what I'm going to talk about is I think I'm going to talk about myself. Imagine that. I have my little tail talking about himself because I uh, have a two-part question from uh, one of my uh, curious listeners. This is one of my lieutenants here at Humpty Dumpty Tribe, Lieutenant Tom from Vermont, who I had the pleasure of having dinner with a couple of weeks ago. He, he starts out by saying that, uh, I, I, well, I don't have his comment in front of me, something like, about how I clearly accepted the normie lifestyle. So that was an assumption. And then he asked, how did, uh, is it how or why or a little bit of both, did I start pursuing doom? That was part one of the question. How I started pursuing doom? And the second part is, uh, I guess, how did I become an eco-Nazi? Meaning, uh, how did I reach the conclusion that humans just, just need to go, that we need to go extinct, that the final solution, the only solution to saving this planet is to make planet Earth a human exclusion zone. Uh, is the one and only way to do this. So anyway, First, uh, about the assumption that I was a normie. Now, I, you know, compared to what I am now, I, uh, you know, compared to being an eco-Nazi uh, preaching uh, human extinction to save the planet, I, I guess I was a normie, but I was somewhat like to think that I was not a complete normie uh, you know pretty much my whole life that uh, I did a better job than I think than most people and the completely clueless fucking moron uh, dominant cultural paradigm of the American Empire having this shit rammed down our throats from cradle to grave uh, I escaped that cultural programming I like to think better than most normies uh, like I've you know what was 1984 1984 
uh, you know, talking about what is it, uh, sports, popular music, uh, what are the other two, alcohol and pornography were the four ways that, uh, you know, the nefarious they keep clueless morons from rebelling that as long as the uh, the nefarious they give the the normies those four things, there is no chance that the normies will ever uh, challenge them. So as far as sports, I am very proud of my record, particularly as a southern white male, that uh, I have never had any interest in sports on any level. I, uh, I am an embarrassment to the southern white male race. I don't hunt. I don't play football. I don't play pool. I, I don't bowl. Uh, don't play golf. I uh, did a little bit of fishing earlier in life, but I've pretty much abandoned that. So, you can't pin that one on me. Now, popular music, now obviously between the years like 1965 and 1974, you know, the greatest 10 years of popular music in human history, I was and remain a big fan of popular music, you know, from like 1965 to 1974. Uh, because somehow, I don't know how it happened in those 10 years that, uh, that the nefarious day, you know, somehow fell asleep uh, at the job and, and let some intelligent, damn good music not only get out there, but, you know, climb the charts of popular culture, but don't worry, they put the kibosh on that very quickly, and a, a lot of people who are, you know, into the music of 1965 to 1974 just followed in lockstep as rock and roll turned to shit. So when rock and roll turned to shit starting in the mid 70s, I walked away from pop music and while I have been a huge music fan all of my life, since about 1975, I have completely rejected the cultural paradigm of music. Now, alcohol, well, guys, obviously, you know me, but uh, I, I will freely admit that I had a little bit of a drinking problem uh, <laughs> earlier in my life. And, you know, thanks to Carlos Castaneda and the teachings of Don Juan Matus, I stopped drinking in uh, 1996. And I did not have a drink for five years. Uh, so I did, I, I went cold turkey after reading Carlos Castaneda. Uh, I honestly don't know if I was an alcoholic or not, whether I fit the definition. Uh, I was certainly borderline drunk, uh, but I want to thank Carlos Castaneda and Don Juan Matus for getting uh, that bad habit out of my life. So since 2001, I started drinking again, but I never have. I, I have pretty much 365 days a year. I have two margaritas, so I have two shots of tequila uh, pretty much 365 days a year. So I guess the nefarious day uh, 
and their cultural programming still has me a little bit hooked on tequila. Now pornography, I will not uh, get too deep into this, but uh, uh, you know everything is relative. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure compared to some people, uh, I am a 12-year-old uh, adolescent male. Uh, compared to Colony of Cells, I am, I, I don't know, uh, a castrated, uh, just, just asexual. Uh, so everything is relative. Now, obviously, if I had a, a more natural outlet for my waning sex drive called a woman in my life, uh, I, you know, I would have no need to be taking matters into my own hands while I'm waiting for my doomer chick to forever to get off her fucking UFO and fly back to Earth. Uh, but since that's not going to happen anytime, so I've done a pretty good job. Uh, I, you know, I've, I've never been a fan of fashion. Uh, fashion absolutely bores the living shit out of me. I have never been a big fan of movies, of of Hollywood. Uh, I mean, I like movies okay, but I, you know, I've never been a big fan of movies. And uh, my my favorite movie of my life is The Graduate, which I think I saw when I was about nine years old. So I like movies like The Graduate. I have no interest and uh, things that blow up, uh, any sort of violent shit, uh, absolutely zero interest in violence, blood and gore, car chases, uh, all of this fucking bullshit uh, that is supposed to... Uh, get us all excited, I guess. No interest whatsoever, never have. Uh, and I have not been, the last time I was at a movie, I think when I was in California in December, my buddy might have dragged me to a movie, but I forgot what it is. And But I have not been to a movie in 2023. I would like to see the new Robert De Niro movie. There is a chance that could happen. Uh, but that is the only movie that I care to see. So, you know, uh, so I give myself pretty good marks for uh, not solidly being a clueless fucking moron uh, normie. Uh, in, in, into all of this lowest common denominator American cultural paradigm bullshit. And, and that's been lifelong. But okay, so when did I start pursuing doom? Well, if we reword the question just a little bit, uh, I have been in... in you know, in, into the environment and ecology and all of that since I was a, a small child. I think I was probably 10 years old uh, when I subscribed to like Audubon Magazine and National Wildlife and stuff like that. I've always been interested in wildlife and the outdoors and what, and my uh, what I was planning to do with my life is that I was going to be an environmental journalist. I decided when I was probably about 14 that I was going to be a roving field editor for, uh, for Audubon magazine, getting paid to travel around the world 
uh, you know, reporting on environmental issues. And so I pursued a, you know, my, my degree in journalism. My intention was to be an environmental journalist uh, for my entire life. Uh, and for the first seven years after I got out of college, uh, that was still my dream. And as often as I could, uh, I wrote about environmental issues. And, you know, I'm talking mainstream environmental issues. So I've always been a, quote, mainstream environmentalist. And the, the last article I wrote for the popular press was about big oil uh, and oil drilling in Monterey Bay off the coast of Santa Cruz in Monterey, California. That was the last, you know, popular press article I ever wrote was uh, about oil drilling in, uh, in Monterey Bay. And that was when I was 30 years old. And so it was at age 30 that, uh, you know, so at age 30, I was a raving, limp dick, uh, mainstream in environmentalist. I was a social justice warrior. Uh, I was a radical left winger journalist uh, writing for all of these lefty publications. Uh, and, 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 I was, and for someone my age, I was, uh, you know, I have thousands and thousands of, of articles published before I was 30, but uh, I was at kind of a hiccup. Uh, m my life kind of hiccuped at age 30, which is a whole, several other stories, all of which I've told and I might tell them. But anyway, I won't get into the, to, to all of the reasons for the hiccup in, in my life. Uh, but uh, one of the things, one of the, was it even age 30? It might have been age, I think it was actually age 29, that when I, I was uh, looking for, figuring out what my next step was going to be after a couple of other things had fallen through my brother who is uh, my brother who I have not spoken to since 1992 that is a whole another story why I have not spoken to my brother since 1992 uh, which I've told before and will tell again if someone really wants to hear that story it's a pretty good one and uh but I was still on good terms with him, and my brother is uh, the most clueless fucking moron normie on the planet. He got all of my clueless fucking moron normie genes. Uh, absolute sports fanatic, uh, absolute awful popular music fanatic. Uh, he masturbated like colony of cells to porno he wasn't really a drunk so but he had three of the four uh anyway and, and it's, it's a complete clueless fucking moron on every level he was the most normie of the normies uh, uh, of the five kids he was by far by far of the five of us the most normie of the five of us and he, of course, being, uh, fitting that description, he was a real estate broker in Atlanta. So he suggested to his kid brother, you know, radical left-wing environmental political journalist that uh, I should get my real estate license in California. He's going... You could make a fucking boatload of money. 
and I, uh, needless to say, you can imagine how much money I was making uh, as a journalist. Uh, now, my dear sweet ex-wife, I mean, she had a regular job to bring in steady income. Uh, but anyway, the, the idea was so absurd. It was so completely absurd uh, to get my real estate license that it appealed to my dark, twisted sense of irony, of uh, my absurdist sense of humor, and I had a, a, a few months to, to, to think of something, so uh, I said, what the hell, I will uh, just, just more for a joke than anything, I, I went to real estate school and, and got my real estate license. Uh, and there I was, a licensed realtor in the state of California. You should have heard my radical left-wing, limp dick, lefty uh, progressives having this howling in derision. That ham bone thinks he is now a Century 21 real estate agent. Well. I made more money in the first three months of selling real estate uh, than I had made uh, in the past year uh, as being a journalist, and I was the rookie of the century. I was the Century 21 uh, rookie of the year uh, back in uh, what was that? 1988, I believe. Anyway, uh, so th that is how. I uh, began my my real estate career, but I I never stopped considering uh, myself to be an, a quote environmentalist, and that 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 always held true. Uh, it, although it got more and more ridiculous uh, that. Uh, that, that I was any sort of, uh, whether a limp dick, a mainstream environmentalist, or a doomer. So, uh, you know, I took some time off, uh, you know, to take care of my mother when she was dying of cancer and, uh, you know, getting into Carlos Castaneda and whatnot in the, in the mid-90s. And... So, j j j just to fast forward, so now, uh, you know, I'm living in Austin, Texas, and I get my uh, Texas real estate license, and I think that I still own, uh, maybe someone can check this, I think I still hold the world record of having the fastest real estate closing from the day I got my real estate license in Texas until my first closing and my first paycheck, which I think was 20 days, and I got some big award for, for breaking a new record in Texas. But when, when I was a realtor in Texas, uh, you know, on the, I, I had a car and a truck, and that, so on my truck, I had two bumper stickers, and uh, one of them said, save the planet, kill yourself. I was riding around, well, not obviously with clients in my truck, but, uh, you know, in the privacy of my own home, I uh, my truck on one side of the bumper was save the planet kill yourself and on the other side was I was proclaiming myself to be a dirt worshiping tree hugger and uh, <laughs> and I actually I remember when my nice car was in the shop and I drove my truck into the Keller Williams office and my broker saw those uh, bumper stickers went absolutely fucking berserk and made me leave 
uh, that those bumper stickers were not allowed at the Keller Williams. So I actually believe that I was a dirt worshiping tree hugger when in fact I was a one man ecocidal maniac killing machine with the uh, environmental footprint of a medium sized village in Uganda. Uh, did, did, did just completely out of fucking control uh, when uh, I, I was living in uh, when I was living in uh, Austin in which you know so this brings us back up to November of 2007 and I think I'm gonna take one more loop around one final goodbye around here while I'm telling this story. So anyway, uh, so when did, so I've told you uh, when I started following Doom, uh, you know, I guess you could say it was November of 2007 when I found YouTube and uh, found Terrence McKenna. Now Terrence McKenna, I don't even think would consider himself a doomer of anything. Uh, Terrence probably would have sided more with being a uh, w w with being a techno utopian. Uh, but anywho, uh, you know, so I Terrence, uh, you know, of course, I had these three. Uh, major psychedelic uh, trips, the mushrooms, the ayahuasca, and the San Pedro in the spring of 2008, as I have reported, and then I, I stumbled in, and, you know, I started uh, finding other people's works. I remember one of the uh, one of the earlier documentaries I saw was called Prophets of Doom. Prophets of Doom and one of the people on that was Michael Rupert. That's when I first heard Michael of Michael Rupert. I don't know was that 2008 and then uh, Michael came out Michael Rupert came out with the documentary just on him called uh, Collapse so if you have not seen Prophets of Doom and sure as shit if you have not seen the uh, the Michael Rupert film Collapse uh, so going from uh, Terrence McKenna to Michael Rupert and you know Michael was a huge fan of Terrence McKenna himself uh, so Terrence was one of Michael Rupert's main influences so once uh, I, I started getting into Michael Rupert and and then somewhere along the line, I'm sure, I uh, don't know what year, probably 2010 maybe, I uh, read Overshoot by William Catton, you know, one of the Bibles of the Apocalypse. Somewhere in there then I stumbled on to the, the works of Derek Jensen, namely his two volume work called End Game. So, uh, End Game and Overshoot were certainly two of the, the major books I read and somewhere in there I was reading the books by Jared Diamond and Michael and, and, and Joseph Tainter. Uh, so, but I, it, so I, I, I don't know when. My guess it was it, it was Michael Rupert uh, who turned me into a doomer. 
Okay, so I would say if I found Michael Rupert probably in well, I was traveling. It, it, it probably it, it is maybe 2010 that I stumbled on the onto Michael Rupert, and uh, that is probably when I started identifying as a doomer. Now, if you look at my early, early uh, videos on Humpty Dumpty Tribe, which I started in 2010, I was a doomer, but I was still not an eco-Nazi. I don't know. I would, I would be interested to look through my old videos to see when I first identified myself as an eco-Nazi. And an eco-Nazi uh, by my definition of, of an eco-Nazi is, you know, someone who understands, uh, who has uh, followed doom long enough and studied it, uh, and studied it enough and just read the science, just looked at the hard science, looked at the overwhelming amount uh, of, of evidence that only leads to one place. There, there was only one conclusion uh, that uh, in, in anyone who saw my soft white underbelly uh, interview knows there is only one conclusion. I, I want to take a final ride through this beach forest. This is the uh, the last hurrah of color. Uh, <clears throat> so, when did it finally get through my thick doomer skull that I had to cut deeper into the onion and understand on a, on a cellular level uh, that uh, the only way to that that life on this planet uh, is going to survive, certainly anything related to a higher form of life, is that humans need to go extinct. There, there, there is nothing. Uh, there, there is no other way to uh, save this planet other than uh, making it a human exclusion zone. As long as one human is, is on this planet, this planet is fucked. Now, I can't remember uh, the word that Tom used about uh, something like, when did I start supporting or, or, or what, but, but it, it, he, he implied in there that I I am a you know a fan uh, of humans going extinct uh, and, and, and again it, it's not quite that simple I, I was forced into it to reaching the conclusion that the only way to quote save this planet is for humans to go extinct uh, and the only uh, lifestyle and consumer choice that makes any difference uh, is to not breed and get yourself sterilized like I did, hopefully before you have any goddamn kids. Uh, but I, I, I still want to make it clear for people ha who haven't gotten this through their heads, uh, it, it, it's not like I want humanity to go extinct it is some of my some of my best friends uh, are, are humans they're people I, I still say uh, as I was saying uh, on that soft white underbelly uh, interview I love people I am a people person uh, the the number one 
uh, as I was saying yesterday, regret that I have going down the road less traveled is that it has turned me into uh, just just a, an unwitting, uh, involuntary loner, borderline hermit. Uh, I uh, I love people. Uh, I, I wish people were not humans, but people are humans, and that is our ultimate flaw. You know, it is the original sin that we are born humans, and we cannot stop. It's genetically hardwired into us. We cannot we will not stop. There is no stopping us. Uh, and, and until Mother Nature figures out a way to stop humans, uh, we, uh, we meaning the planet, uh, is fucked. It, it, it's that simple. It, 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 am I happy to uh, reach this conclusion? Is, is this something that I think is a fucking joke? Uh, you, you know, I, I treat it as a joke, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's no joke, people. Uh, I, I don't know if, if people think that I'm joking. Uh, there's one fucking way to save this planet for every one of our fellow Earthlings that are lucky enough to still survive, and that is to uh, is for humans to go extinct. It's it, it, it's that simple, uh, and so what the, you know I'm trying to you know I'm, I'm really trying to think. Was there an epiphany? Was was there one book I read, one video I watched, where it finally sunk through my clueless, uh, what was left of my clueless uh, normie brain and my mainstream uh, limp dick lefty environmentalist brain? Uh, you know, the, the one that comes to mind, do you guys remember that movie? It actually won an Academy Award, that documentary called The Cove. The Cove about that dolphin slaughter, that annual dolphin slaughter going on over there in Japan, which I'm pretty sure they had this year. Uh, and that was the moment uh, if, if, if any if anything uh, that I have ever watched uh, got through to me that humans that were irredeemable that if this planet of, uh, of humans the humanity, will allow uh, that dolphin slaughter to continue. Uh, it sounds to me like there's about a dozen humans on the planet uh, making money off of these, the most indefensible slaughter of our fellow earthlings. Uh, in the history of humanity, if, if, if 8 billion of us cannot stop that, uh, it, it, do we need any more proof uh, that, we, that, that we're unstoppable? That uh, now you don't have to be uh, at the, the level of uh, evil uh, uh, of those dolphin killers over there in Japan, but uh, it just it just goes to show. And, and, and just a real quick note: uh, any of you fucking vegans thinking you're saving the fucking planet uh, by not uh, eating uh, your your fellow Earthlings, uh, you know, acting like there's no fucking difference. 
between that dolphin slaughter and, and the goddamn uh, chicken house. Uh, you are so fucking clueless. I, 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 I don't have time for you. Uh, these fucking militant vegans uh, acting like there's no difference between a chicken and a dolphin. You're as fucking clueless anyway. I've had enough of you. Uh, so just shut the fuck up uh, with that nonsense. Uh, but anyway, I just had to make that amplification and clarification that I do eat my fellow earthlings, but I do not eat dolphin because I understand the difference between a dolphin and a chicken. <clears throat> Jesus. Uh, so anyway, if there was one defining moment of time when I became an eco-Nazi and flew up my hands and said, as much as I love people, humans, humans just have to go. Uh, it would be the Cove. If you have never watched the Cove or you haven't watched it uh, in a few years, uh, go go watch The Cove. And, and, and you, you, you know, it, it, it won a goddamn Oscar. It was, the, I'm pretty sure it was the documentary of the year. Made no difference. No difference. And these evil motherfuckers kept right on uh, killing those goddamn dolphins. Uh... And it makes me wonder, everybody says dolphins are so goddamn smart. It doesn't sound like they're that smart and they can't stay out of that fucking cove. But anyway, uh, whatever it was, and that was certainly, uh, that was, I don't know how anybody could watch the cove and not walk away from that uh, without understanding the the only way uh, to quote save this planet uh, is for humans to go extinct and uh, it, by, by any chance if there's some clueless fucking moron uh, if you want humans to go extinct why don't you why don't you show us how it's done why don't you make an example of yourself? And why don't you ask yourself uh, if you think that humans, uh, that, they, that humans need to go extinct? I, I think that you should go and shut the fuck up! You fucking clueless moron! Uh, I anybody uh, a a acting like uh, that, that some fucking uh, eco Nazi. Uh, who never bred, uh, taking themselves out, uh, is, is going to do a fucking thing. Uh, you know, that, that fucking comment, uh, you know, Elon Musk was making it uh, a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Jessica Wildfire uh, was brushing right up against the fucking comment. Uh, a, a, a couple of days ago, uh, it, 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 you know, it just, it, 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 that, that comment alone, uh, without the Cove or Terrence McKenna or Michael Rupert or William Catton, uh, just that level of clueless fucking morons making that comment is uh, is reason enough to be a fucking eco Nazi. So anyway, Tom, I just want you to understand that it's not like I quote support. I uh, mean, you know, maybe if humans had the same population as chimpanzees, okay. Uh, since we are basically a species, we're the third chimpanzee. So uh, if, if, if we could have however many chimpanzees are uh, left on this planet, 100,000, uh, I, I think that's fair enough. 100,000 humans on the planet. That, that, that's fair enough. 
Uh, we'll keep 100,000 humans on the fucking planet. Uh, but, but we all know uh, that you can't keep 100,000 humans on the planet. 100,000 humans on the planet would be 8 billion humans on the planet. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it ain't gonna happen. And uh, it ain't gonna happen uh, that we willfully, voluntarily uh, make ourselves extinct by getting ourselves sterilized before having the first child ain't gonna happen, which is uh, why the planet is fucked. And uh, by the time we do go extinct, we're going to have taken uh, pretty much every one of our fellow earthlings bigger than a mouse down with us. It's just, uh, it is just what humans do. It's just what humans do. But anyway, since I do realize I am talking to myself, uh, I am going to wrap this up because this human needs to unload these, uh, these three 10-foot treated 4x4s that I just bought at Home Depot on my last run to Home Depot for 2023. Back at Bugs in a Jar Farm, I see my final guest. One more night, heading to 43 degrees. Get out there and enjoy being a human while you still can. Bye, guys.